Hello and welcome to Life Off Screen. You know, we had an episode a while back that was worthy of two episodes. It yes. was that that wonderful. Uh, the episode I'm referring to is with uh, TV producer and author Squire Rushnell mm -hmm. and his very, very funny wife, comedian Louise Duarte. Uh, on the first episode, uh, Squire talked a lot about, you know, he produced and created the classic children's television show, Schoolhouse Rock. And what's amazing is that's a whole generation mm -hmm. that learned the Constitution and grammar, conjunction, and, and we actually remembered it and started singing it uh, on the episode. Uh, as well as Louise, you know, she, we felt like we had like, like 20 guests because she <laughs> went through her great array of wonderful uh, impressions of some of the icons of, well, of comedy. Well, and her very best is Carol Burnett. Mm. And what's beautiful about this episode coming up is you'll get a treat in hearing her again, especially when she talks about her long career touring with Tim Conway and Harvey Corman. Excellent. And the icing on the cake is when they talk about their marriage together and how they have a ministry and prayer for couples. That's right. So stay tuned and uh, we're going to jump right in. I need to ask you about uh, a couple other men in your life, uh, Tim Conway and Harvey Corman. How did that connection happen? Were you toured for years? For years. Well, well, a total of 15 years, 12 with Tim and Harvey, and then, then we, had, we lost Harvey. But another Godwin, I, um, Tim and Harvey decided to do a show called Together Again, where they were going to do some of the famous sketches from the Carol Burnett show. And, and basically, they really needed a cheap Carol Burnett. <laughs> and so uh, they couldn't afford the real thing. So uh, all these managers and agents were sending videotapes. In those days, it was videotapes. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how my tape got there. But Tim Conway told us, he said, all these a pile of tapes on his desk and on the floor. And there was one on top. And he said, all right, let me just start. And he took one and he put it in there. And it was my, my tape. God wink. Yes. God and wink. He, yeah. Yes. And he called Charlene, his wife, over and he said, What do you think of what do you think of her? And she said, Yeah, I think you should hire her. So I get now, remember, I don't know my dream was to be Carol Burnett mm -hmm. and to work with Tim and Harvey. As a kid, that's all I wanted. Wow. And I used to wow. pray about that when my little Italian mother would take me to the Catholic church, she'd give me a quarter and she'd say, here's a quarter, light a candle for the souls in purgatory. <laughs> I would light a candle and I would always say the same thing. Please God, I just want to meet Carol Burnett and work with Tim and Harvey. Please God, I just want to meet Carol Burnett and work with him. <laughs> now this is how God hears the prayers of little wow. girls. I get a phone call. Hello, Mr. Worth. This is Tim Conway. Uh, Harvey Corman and I would like to know if you'd like to join us and do a show with us. Come on. I met them Come at Gary's on. Deli in L.A. They walked in. You know, across from Jeff, Hallmark. Across from Hallmark. Yeah, right. Yeah. They walked in. <laughs> when I looked at them, it was like I know them all my life because really I had because I had yeah. studied them so much. We sat there at Jerry's Deli and we put the show together. And for 15 years, it was just the most lovely. It was terrific. I would wow. have to punch that. I, honestly, you guys, every night before I went on stage, I'd pinch myself and just say, God, how did you do this? How did you answer that prayer? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 I got to interject my Carol Burnett story. Um, and I, I reference this quite often that of all the people I worked with in my years at CBS, she had, had to be, has to be one of the nicest. And, um, but one time, uh, it was while I was doing The Price is Right, and I had some visitors from uh, Colorado, and they said, can you give us a tour of CBS? So I, I gave them the Cook's tour. I mean, I took them all four levels of, of Television City and showed them everything, and we're making our way out to the elevator, and I, I said, okay, we'll say goodbye. And she said, well, what's that, those rooms over there? And I said, oh, those are just rehearsal halls. They're just, you know, cedar block, rectangles, and they're empty, no, you don't need them. And she said, well, we just show them to us because then we can tell people back home we saw everything. And I said, sure. So we're walking over to the rehearsal hall. And while we're walking, this is a God wink. While we're walking, she says, do you ever see stars around here? And I said, of course. You know, it's a working studio. And she says, have you ever seen Carol Burnett? And I said, absolutely, because Carol did the, the uh, Carol Burnett show on the same st studio, Studio 33, that I did The Price is Right on. And I said, so she, this is kind of her home away from home at Television City. So anyway, we walk over and I think it's empty, the rehearsal hall. 
I barge in, <laughs> and there is Carol Burnett, Tim Conway, oh my uh, um, uh, 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 Bob Mackey. Oh yeah, uh -huh. and and I forgot the name of him, but his, their director. Oh and, yes. And I apologize. I said, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I barged in you." And Carol couldn't have been nice. She goes, "Oh, come here, come here, come here." She pulled out three folding chairs and she said sit we're do we're working on a sketch we want you to watch wow. it and tell us if you think it's funny oh <laughs> oh oh i mean oh. i'm in heaven oh. you know oh, and so was, was this gal we brought uh it's remarkable oh, She's oh got a that's story a memory that's yeah. in the memory that bank so how wonderful. beautiful is that she she is a great lady yeah. and you know tim and harvey knew knew jesus they knew the Lord. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Yeah, which is which is great. We would have a lot of long talks about that. And uh, actually, Harvey used to say, "I'm a Jew for Jesus," but I don't dare tell my poker friends when I'm having poker on Thursday night. <laughs> but and um, Tim, Tim knew the Lord, and it, it, you know, I know where they are. I know I'll see them again. We're very close still with their families. And um, matter of fact, my son Danny was engaged to Harvey Corman's daughter. Really? So yeah, it was a, we were a very close relationship. And then that after Harvey died, then that another year went by and that that didn't work out. But that's okay. He's married to a wonderful woman now. Yeah. Uh, but it was we were all so close. Because we worked over hundred dates a year we were doing. Whoa. Yes. It was amazing. And you did Vegas, right? Oh, we did Vegas all the time. But mm -hmm. you know, I have a, a great story about it was after 9-11, right after 9-11. And we were I guess we were living on the vineyard and plus we had a little apartment in New York. So you were in New York yeah. and 9-11 happens. And I was on my way to get in a cab, to go to the ferry, to get off the island, to, to, to meet Tim and Harvey and I forget where it was. And I see the, you know, the terrible thing that happened on 9-11 mm -hmm. and I get, I get a call from Tim and he said, obviously, we're going to cancel the show. I said, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And then a few hours later, he called me. He said, we're on. Come. And I said, what happened? He said, he said they are selling tickets like crazy. He said, people need to laugh. They yep. need to laugh. Mm -hmm. So we came out, and we did this show, and Tim spoke beforehand. And in all the years, the 15 years we've been working on this, I've never heard an audience laugh so loud it's like mm. they it was laughter was medicine mm. to them yes. and, you know it just was it just mm. just warmed my heart to see the it. healing yeah. power Profound. of comedy ah. the healing yeah. power it's, it's that is so wonderful yes yeah, yeah. yes now let's mm. transition into you mentioned prayer uh you also have a ministry of pray together stay together you've written yeah. a book books or book i can't remember okay, okay yeah on yeah. on praying is is a couple is a family um yeah. talk about the role prayer uh plays in your well, marriage we discovered we we when we met 20 years ago um and just fell madly in love uh instantly and uh as louise said had coffee that day and every day since um we also started to pray together. And that was something that was really unique to me. I had never heard of a husband and wife praying together. Consistently. What a, what yeah. a neat yeah. idea. Well, I mean, yes, mm -hmm. consistently, every single day. And so we decided to start praying together every single day. And what we noticed was that the, the prayers were answered more more rapidly, more robustly. We just we just noticed that it was kind of like taking a sponge and throwing it in the bathtub that it expanded. It wasn't just the sum of two people praying. It was bigger than that. And and so we started talking to people about it, and people would say to us, uh, "Oh, how do you do that?" You know. And then when we would go out and we'd start talking about it at churches, people would come up to us and say, "How do you do it?" We said, wow. how do you do what? Pray. We're talking about praying together. And I thought it's kind of like, isn't that like walking? Doesn't everybody mm -hmm. know how to pray? Yeah. And the, the idea was so foreign because pastors, as a rule, don't talk about people praying together. And, and so often the churches are the women's group and the men's march and the this and that and so forth. And, and so we're talking about something that 
is really together, two people praying together, the most intimate act between a man and a woman, which was the uh, subtitle of our first book, Couples Who Pray. We, we wrote that book and we started that ministry, of, uh, which is ministry is Pray Together, Stay Together, mm -hmm. which of course was based upon the, uh, the famous slogan in the 50s of, of the of the pastor of the uh, the Catholic uh, uh, priest who uh, who used that slogan to sign off his TV show families that pray together stay together nobody had ever trademarked it so we prayed trademark pray together stay together and so that now is our ministry and we when we started that book we we just had this idea of creating a, uh, a device to get people in, involved in the idea, to make it a challenge. So we said, why don't we just create a 40-day prayer challenge where you just pray together five minutes a day for 40 days. And you see what happens. <clears throat> and along the way, we started talking to research people. We ended up uh, with in association with Baylor University mm -hmm. Institute yes. for the Studies of Religion, mm -hmm. and they are going to do the study of when we collect enough data, when they are going to do the evaluation of this, and they've already evaluated some of the study. Uh, and it's for astounding, us. Yeah. by the way, the power of prayer. Yeah, I mean, yes. respect goes up like 22%, conversation over 20%, romance over 20%. Arguments you know? go down, and the fear of divorce goes to zero. Yeah. This yeah. is when remarkable. couples pray together consistently. And, and, the, and the stories that we've had in now yeah. 10 years of this ministry uh, of people who had come back from the brink of a marriage that just had no hope at all, but... When they prayed together, it just started to break through for them. Mm -hmm. And it just makes us cry. When yes. we hear one of those victory stories, mm -hmm. we just cry. We are just wow. so grateful. I'm so moved by the intentionality, the intentionality mm -hmm. to have open children's eyes and, uh, and God wink eyes for anyone, but the intentionality <laughs> in, in praying. Baylor University is one of the universities that Dan and I spoke at. Uh, 16 ah. of them, in fact, last year, and we've mentioned it before on the show. But I will tell you that the voice heard loudest from us was something that the students cued us into. We had prepared all sorts of things about um, entrance into the uh, into the in industry. We have a lot of yeah. things to share. Trends in the industry, where it's going mm -hmm. right now, how to get in, inroads, ways to uh, approach as a Christian, yes. screenwriting, all those different topics. But the one they were most hungry for was how do you have a forty-two year marriage? Yes. Oh. How do you how do you raise how do you yeah. raise healthy children? Yes. How do you stay plugged in to your faith community yes. while and you're yes. doing the demanding work of producing yeah. the network television show? What informed your choices? Right. And yeah. to take them back to times of prayer. Yes. yes. This is where is. we could find common ground yes. that's right. by saying that we're going to fight for each other and God's mm -hmm. best for each other yes. and make decisions based on his leading. And that yes. would be, that would be a voice of God through both of us. Yes. And, that, and that communion would be our confidence. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. This is where we're landed. We, we found, uh, cause we've done, you know, hundreds, we've interviewed hundreds of couples, but you know, they start seeing God's, again, his direction. Again, it's get back mm. to, in all your ways, acknowledge me, not direct yourself. They start getting this discernment. They start, the Holy Spirit starts working in their hearts as they pray. I can't tell you how many times we've prayed about something. Mm. And then, then we come out of the prayer and say, you know, what if we call this guy? I feel like maybe the Lord wants us to talk mm. to this person or mm. that person. And it's invariably, it's like the, the Holy Spirit is, mm -hmm. will bring that to mind. Yes. And, yeah. and that's what we have to teach people to do is, Put God first. Let right. him lead. And when he leads, and I have to tell you, our relationship and anyone that you talk to who prays consistently, they have a solid relationship. Yeah. When you yeah. think that the fear yeah. of divorce goes to zero, yeah. that tells you something about it's the power of prayer. the most powerful really force is. in the universe. It, it really, really is. is. Which is why, of course, the enemy is after us at all the yeah. time. Because you know? yeah. yeah. he doesn't want that to happen. But, yeah. you know, we are... We have uh, this year. We decided that we really needed to uh, 
kickstart the 40 day prayer challenge. We're calling it the prayer challenge. And, uh, and it is for 40 days. You go to praystay.org and all the information is there. We've got a bunch of videos that we did with gateway out of Dallas of, uh, yeah. of couples praying together just to exemplify, to show people how to pray together. Mm -hmm. and practical. And it's, and it's mm -hmm. not just practical, married couples. Right. It's, it's two friends. It's two sisters. It's family members mm -hmm. and so on so forth and um and so we have we have begun this process of getting as many of the big churches as we can on board what we do is we say could you just go to the website praystay.org and take the survey at the beginning of your 40-day prayer challenge and return at the end of your 40-day prayer challenge take that survey again that's how we collect the data for Baylor, for Baylor. Mm -hmm. and uh, and you'll also see the progress that you've made in the forty days. <laughs> I mean, it, it will be demonstrative uh, how mm -hmm. how you how how well you have lowered your arguments mm -hmm. and all of those kinds of things. But mm -hmm. I also think because with Baylor, it makes it scientific, and if we can mm -hmm. show to the world mm -hmm. the scientific facts, I mean, we as Christians, we know that we know yeah. that God answers yeah. prayers. Yeah. But but you go out into the world, like NBC said to us, well, yeah, when you get the when you get the data, you know, yeah. you get the data, yeah. I mean, you come back and we'll mm -hmm. have you on. Well, we want to get that to say this is what actually happens. Mm -hmm. So you use spiritual and scientifically, they all because God yeah. created it all. It all goes yes. together. Yes, that's yes. powerful. Yeah, it is. It wow. is. So well, we'd love to have you guys come on board in any way you can. You bet. Ministry, that, we that we love to. Stay together. <laughs> yes, you know, Master Media. We have uh, we've been doing it for almost thirty five years. We have our daily uh, uh, media prayer calendar yes, where we no, send the tens great. of thousands love of people it. across America every day to people uh, in the media uh, mm -hmm. to pray for them. Yeah. And uh, the difference that makes. You know, yeah. we as Christians, and, and you, you guys have vast experience in the media, sometimes as Christians, we, we take offense to the media, and yeah. we make them the, the bad guy, the enemy. Yeah. And where God would say, pray for him. Yes. Pray for him. Stand yes. in there and let me work. Let yes. me work. Let me change yeah. hearts. Let me change lives. Let me produce in their hearts yeah. stories that are going to bless the world yes. through our screens. Yeah. So and, and you're what right, Dan. Do. What you you guys are doing, that's exactly where God has all of us. And you know, in in the God showed us one time in our prayer time, you know, we should not be intimidated. God owns the airwaves. Mm -hmm. Satan has tried to hijack it, but God is saying, I own it, mm -hmm. which means you're heir to what I own, which means you own it. So you mm -hmm. can claim it. And mm -hmm. so often Christians get intimidated and I say don't go out do more films because you know find a need and fill it there is a need for hope now mm -hmm. there's a need for encouragement yes. and people need to see God in their lives they they're desperate and this is the time for all of us to to take a stand and speak up for the Lord but you know I know there are those executives because I have been I was a network executive but when you get that uh, that master media calendar and you find your name in it as, a, mm -hmm. as an executive or as a studio executive or, or a network mm -hmm. executive. And you know that on October 13th that there's a whole lot of people who are going to be praying for you. That is a certain kind of armor that you mm -hmm. feel that you have on you on that mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And I think that there, are, there have to be people. Of course, I've always been a man of faith, but there have to be colleagues in the industry who are not quite as outspoken about their faith, mm -hmm. who have not quite opened the door to the Lord, mm -hmm. who just have to have a little sense of comfort knowing that you two and an army of others mm -hmm. are going to be praying for them. Yes. Yeah. Well, Amen. we have actually experienced that firsthand on a, um, uh, we're an actress, uh, you know, a top tier actress pro we, ran into her at the airport and Dan, uh, you know, we prayed for God, for a, a God 
appointed moment. And mm -hmm. we ended up both getting, stepping into the elevator together. It was oh. just a, we said, we saw her there and we said, Lord, if you want mm -hmm. us to encourage her heart, we yeah. or orchestrate it. And Great. our flights were called at the same time in a sea of people just so uh, into that yeah. thing. And he had mentioned to her something very well, sweet. I, I told her, I said, I, I'm head up an organization where we mobilize tens of thousands of Christians across the, the nation to pray for those in the, the media. And one day last year, your name was on that list. And so yeah. I want you to know that tens of thousands of people were praying specifically yeah. for you. Aww. They were praying for your career. They were praying for your family. And yeah. they were praying for your life. That's wow. and she just stopped and yeah. she got very teary eyed. Yeah. And she said, I can't think of, of a kinder thing you could have told me. Yeah. And she said, I'm sure my life has greatly benefited from those prayers. Yeah. And I'm so grateful yeah. that you, you would do that for us. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Then her, then her assistant kept saying, we're going to miss our flight. We're going to miss our flight. She just went, no. <laughs> and she wanted to talk some more. So. You know, and so uh, it has been sweet. We have been the fruit of it because Dan will contact as yeah. almost everyone that he can see it's their day. Just want you to know here and, and happy to share with you. And these yeah. relationships he's developed. I mean, some of these people have called them and said, you're going to read about me, you know, in Friday. Yeah. This, this has happened. Yeah, with the Me Too movement. Me Too movement and other things. But That's I great. know can you can, have can extended. You yes. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it so is amazing really how sometimes you don't even know how God is using you. We, we just heard something yesterday was a, we had been ministering to neighbors of ours and, and, uh, you know, they, they both died. And so the daughter was here, you know, cleaning out the house and everything. And she said, I, we had never met her. She said, I want to, I want to meet you and Squire. She said, you have no idea how important you were to my parents. They said that it was so touching when you prayed with them and that they have all these friends at Martha's Vineyard, but they felt that what we did, cause you know, you take time to pray for someone. Mm -hmm. And then Squire said, well, can we pray for you? Mm -hmm. And it was this. This was yesterday. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. precious because you don't know the impact that you have on people's lives. Because yeah. because our friends never told us, hey, that was special that you prayed mm -hmm. for us. They they're just there. We prayed sure. for them, but you don't know sometimes the impact you have. Yes. But just know to be obedient. Do what God tells. Just love them. Love yes. them. Love them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, we appreciate the two of you. Thank you uh -huh. for for using your, your amazing talents for God's kingdom. And thank you for alerting our nation yeah. to uh, the God winks out there, the God's involved in every little aspect of our lives. He, and he, he knows the number of hairs on our head. He doesn't he miss does. a thing. Sure so, does. Oh, thank you so much. We can't uh, wait to see you guys face to face. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can have a little pasta together. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah. I would love, love it. That would yeah. be great. <laughs> Grateful for your lives and thank you for sharing them with us. Oh, thank God you. bless you guys. Thank you for your ministry. Thank, thank you. You, you right. as well. Thank you. thank you for joining us for Life Off Screen with Dan and Peggy Rupel. Life Off Screen is produced by Master Media International. Our technical director is Jason Rugg. Please subscribe to the Life Off Screen YouTube channel or subscribe to the Life Off Screen podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love to hear from you. You can leave your comments in the comment section. And to find out more about Master Media, go to mastermedia.com. Thanks again for joining us. Hope to see you next time.